Let me thank uh, my colleague for yielding. In March, when the President committed uh, our troops uh, to NATO's mission in Libya, I said that he had a responsibility to the American people to define the mission, to explain what America's role was in achieving that mission, and lay out how it was to be accomplished. Uh, he has not effectively done so. And the American people and the members of this House have questions and concerns that have gone unanswered. The President of the United States is our Commander-in-Chief, and I've always believed that combat decisions uh, should be left to the Commander-in-Chief and to the generals on the ground. But the, all, the House also has an obligation to heed the concerns of our constituents and to carry out our constitutional responsibilities. The resolution I have put forward expresses the will of the people in a responsible way that reflects our commitments to our troops and to our allies. And lay, let me lay out exactly what this resolution does. First, it establishes that the President has not asked for and that the Congress has not granted authorization for the introdu introduction or continued involvement of our troops in Libya. Second, it reasserts Congress's constitutional role to fund our troops. Third, it requires the President to provide within 14 days information on that mission that should have been provided from the start. And lastly, it reaffirms the vote that we took last week that says there should be no troops on the ground in Libya. I hope the President will recognize his obligations outlined in this, obli in this resolution and provide this information to Congress, and in so, in so doing so, better communicate to the American people what our mission in Libya is and how it will be achieved. The resolution offered by my colleague from Ohio, Mr. Kucinich, uh, conveys the concerns of the American people, but it also mandates a precipitous withdrawal from our role in supporting our NATO allies in Libya. In my opinion, that would undermine our troops and our allies, which could have serious consequences for our broader national security. In my view, the gentleman's resolution goes too far. Uh, we may have differences regarding how we got here, but we cannot turn our backs on our troops and our NATO partners who have stuck by us over the last 10 years. In 1991, my first vote as a member of this body I was to authorize the use of force in the first Gulf War. It was a consequential time, but I think we did the right thing. And today is no different. And on behalf of the American people in our country, we have an obligation to support our troops in harm's way and to support our allies. This resolution puts the President on notice. He has a chance to get this right. And if he doesn't, Congress will exercise its constitutional authority, and we will make it right. So I would urge a yes on my resolution, and a no on the Kucinich resolution, and I yield back. Yields back his time.